I'm Anna Carose. I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Um, listen to my new single, Night, out now. Congratulations with the new single, uh, Naive. Um, it's 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 cool when it's like the first of the year, but it's cooler when it's something fresh and it's like that first listen of an upcoming project. Um, talk to me about Naive and what made this one so special for you to want to, you know, make this the first song, the first track, the first listen of the new era of Annika. Yeah, totally. Um, well, thank you for listening to the song. I'm happy you like it. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I feel like it was a pretty natural decision for me to make, honestly, um, mostly because the last few months um, before going into this whole quarantine were very much an experimental phase sonically. I kind of worked with a very tight knit group of people on the first project. So I was trying to, you know, broaden my horizons and, and work with new people and kind of step out of my comfort zone, comfort zone a little bit. And, um, and yeah, and so I did that and I worked with a bunch of new people and, and kind of found a, a group that I connected with. And, um, and yeah, Naive kind of felt like a perfect bridge between Ventura Boulevard, which was the first batch of music and um, the songs following this release. Um, yeah, because it's just, it, the new music is it's pretty different. I mean, they all were kind of written in the same environment and same space, all in, in my little room with my piano on the same keyboard. But um, sonically, just the, the whole experience of working with new people definitely changed um, the surrounding factors. And so, yeah, it just felt like a perfect bridge between both worlds. Um, and it was fun. It was like something that people could dance to, especially during this. It's like you want to be able to move and like smile and have a good time. So, yeah. Aside from sonically, I feel like, you know, when I'm listening to the song, I feel like you're finally comfortable with yourself. Like you're finally comfortable singing the way that you're singing you're finally comfortable just being the artist that you are is that safe to say yeah t totally i mean i think um i think the the first couple years i was doing sessions it was a lot of like coming into myself and understanding what worked for me and how to how to use my voice um in a way that felt authentic but was still um would still resonate with other people and um and i think it really just came down to being as honest as as i possibly can be and um and i i always write from personal experience but um it's nerve-wracking you know to share such vulnerable parts of yourself um but i think i think i've gotten to a place where that's the only way i can really do it you know some people kick a soccer ball and some people dance on a stage and for me that's kind of my purest form of of um, honesty and being myself um so yeah it definitely took a little bit of getting used to especially when ventura came out um but yeah, it just it feels good to be honest, you know. What do you feel has been like your biggest uh, change uh, since you know whatever first piece, whatever that first song you ever like wrote was? Like, what do you think was the biggest change? Was it the songwriting? Was it the way that you kind of vocalize? Was it the way that you kind of hit those notes that you do? Like, what was it for you? I think everything has has definitely evolved. I mean, um, I'm. I'm 18 and I was writing songs at like 10 years old. And so I think that natural evolution um, just had a, had a major effect on, you know, everything that I'm doing now is a lot of growing up and a lot of bad things, a lot of good things, highs and lows. And do you feel like there was something significant for you? Like, uh, like the writing part, like the way that you write your lyrics today or like oh, yeah, the yeah. way that you sing today? Uh, absolutely. Um, I think it's it really just comes down to the the honesty you know and and I think like I was saying before I was very scared in the beginning to to have that voice and to speak about things that I wasn't even talking to the people closest to me about but I was putting it into music form and it was an uncomfortable process at first um to share with people and I think now when I sit down to write um, it's very different from when I was doing it a, a few years ago because I, f I feel this like endless space of just like being myself and being open and 
it's a great feeling to have not being scared of it as much as you used to be. You mentioned earlier that you brought in a whole new team for this for this track and you know the rest of the music that's coming forward. Um, who was this new team and what was it about them that you wanted to bring them into to your music? Well, first of all, the this the first single, so Naive was actually done with a really close friend, friend of mine named Grant, who I've been working a lot more tightly with. Um, and Nikki, who produced 90% of the first project. So the funny thing is we wrote Naive the day Ventura Boulevard came out. So um, it was a really kind of just whirlwind of a day. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're, they're kind of like my, um, my, just my people. I always can go to them. I can trust them. And I think what um, allowed me to also share those connections with people in this new phase or this whatever you want to call it was just that immediate instinctive feeling that you get when you meet someone because I'm, I'm I'm not a person that walks in and I'm like hey like play me the track like this better be the best thing I've ever heard I'm like let's talk about you and your mom and what you like to eat for dinner and like see if there's something there or I just want to talk to you like a friend and we can hang out and enjoy each other's company because I feel like that opens up a whole lane for being okay with being vulnerable and being yourself and um and letting people into this like small world that you've created for yourself so um i've been working with this guy jesse shatkin who's an incredible incredible producer and this woman steph jones who i actually wrote um in the end with um, on the last ep um and this guy max wolfgang and that's kind of been the core team um for this whole phase and also um, my favorite Swedes, Eric Hassel, and, and this a wonderful producer named Grizzly, who flew over from Sweden for a couple of weeks. And man, it was crazy. We spent like 13 hours in the studio every day like, working on a bass line. It was a, it was a process, but it was so nice to like have no time pressure. I was like, all right, I, I do need to go to bed, but I'm like, but this is fun. <laughs> you mentioned the bass line, how that one took a little bit of time. Is that the thing that took the longest, uh, the piece that took the longest with this track? Or do you feel like there was a specific portion or a, se or a segment in this song that kind of challenged you a lot? The baseline thing was, uh, was for a different song, but this one, um, definitely. I mean, the, the weird thing about this one is, is it was written from scratch in the room, which is something that I never do. I always bring in songs that I've written at home into um into the studio um but i think because grant is such a close friend of mine i was like fuck it if this doesn't go well it's fine like we can just hang out and like eat some chips and it'll be nice um so doing that is always definitely a, a challenge and something i i i struggle with um at times because it's so strange to like be with other people and like writing in front of it like you know what i mean like it's a weird it's a weird kind of like foreign thing as much as it's not, it kind of still is to me. Um, so that's always challenging, but luckily enough, this song was written pretty, pretty quickly. I think because I was so stressed out about the EP coming out, I was like, let's get this done. I was like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about the vocals in this track. Uh, they, they, you know, your voice sounds different. The way that you sing sounds different compared to your previous material. So, you know, what kind of inspired, uh, this on Naive? I think um, it also it, it's also pretty dependent on on writing from scratch in the room because when you write on piano at least for me um, I tend to fall into this pattern where I write a lot of my songs at a very similar tempo and they can all kind of fall into ballad land um, and it takes a pretty fantastic producer to be like, no, this, let's turn this around and turn, like, Fly to You, for example, turn into, like, this crazy, like, dance song, right? But, um, but yeah, with Naive, I think because we started with production, um, and it was a completely different tempo, it kind of already set the tone for the song, which was more, like, an aggressive manner, um, that kind of just influenced how I, how I sang, how I sang the song and even how I wrote it. Um, it was just a completely different approach, but it feels so good. It's nice to have a song to dance <laughs> to and not cry to. <laughs> now, it's kind of interesting that you, you mentioned like uh, how different it is not going straight to the piano or, or any other instrument, and then you start doing the same kind of melodies or sounds. Um, earlier or last week, I was on the phone with another artist who was saying, 
you know, they've been in a they've been a rock band for years, but he was saying that for this new album, he stopped going to his guitar and learned the piano for this record because uh, he realized that you know every riff, every every piece of music from a guitar has already been played. Um, so totally. going to the piano kind of made him get out of his comfort zone and kind of get creative once again. Do you feel like that's similarly what happened to you this time? For sure. Absolutely. I think like it's so important for the evolution of an artist that you take those risks and that you know when to move on from something and try to, to create a, a different world with something that you've never done before. I think that's how that's how you evolve as an artist and that's how you get better and that's how you stay um, consistent in the sense of like you're not remaining at like a pretty stagnant mm -hmm. level of like musicianship or whatever it is and so um, yeah it's it's scary and like I'm not even somebody who's put out albums and has like been touring for years like I can't even imagine the difficulties involved when you get to that place of like how do I get better how do I make the next thing different and cool and I think that's definitely um a key factor to to doing that is like just stepping out of your comfort zone so yeah it's it's scary a little bit. I like picked up the guitar a couple times this time around too. I was like, I suck at guitar. I'm literally the worst, but it's so fun. Um, and I tried just like playing really, really shitty parts on guitar. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like this is a different tempo at least. So I'm like, I like this. And then I eventually moved to the piano because I'm like, yeah, we can't do this all the way. <laughs> so back to your back to your voice. Do you feel like you had to learn how to sing differently um, in order to you know, sing the way that you did with Naive? Not necessarily. I think, um, I think I knew that I, I think I immediately knew that I had to channel something different. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to fall into uh, just wanting to be sad all the time in my lyrics and in my melodies and how I portray a vocal. Um, and, you know, this song like came from a place of pure, like, kind of jealousy and anger and like why can't I be like this so it was like a pretty natural thing for me to be like all right this you got to go at this with a little bit more aggression and oomph because that's how you feel right now and that's what it's that's what the lyrical content is is kind of is saying um so yeah it was fun too also to be able to like fully project and, and be mad <laughs> <laughs> now you mentioned you wrote this song from scratch what was the lyric or a word that popped up in your head that kind of started uh, this song. So funny. I was, I was listening back to the voice memos from the day we wrote that. And it's funny when you're collaborating with somebody else, you kind of speak out ideas rather than singing them. Cause you're like, well, that's, that's kind of cool. Right. Like you like that. Um, and I, I was listening back to the voice memos and I was playing piano in the room and I was like, what if it was like, for somebody so unstable, like, you really have your shit together. And Grant's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I just, like, kept going. <laughs> um, and it kind of turned out, he was like, I said something about somebody being naive. And Grant was like, oh, cool. That's a cool word. You should try and, like, fit that into this whole thing that you're, that you're talking about. And I was like, nice. And then at the end of the, the course, we kind of just stuck that in there. And that became the, the key line, you know? <laughs> it's it. it it always amazes me like how songs kind of get started. Um, it's not necessarily in a room because you're focused on a song. Like, you know, there's so many random things in life that happen that kind of kickstart either a lyric oh, or even a melody. Um, because this is something new for you starting from scratch, do you feel like this has been the most challenging way of writing music? Yeah, I'd say. I think it's also so dependent on who you're doing it with. Um, and your comfort level in the space in which you are doing it. Um, because I, I, I know that from when I was in a, in a band when I was 13 and we were put in rooms to write songs from scratch six days a week with strangers every day. And you know, you're 13, like, what do you have? What do you have to talk about? I'm like, I left my book at school. Like, I don't know. What do you want me to say? And so that I remember it was very, very challenging because I wanted to learn so badly. I wanted to be good so badly, but it took um, a few years for me to realize that that comes from experiencing things. And at 13, you are doing your math homework and that is about it. Um, so yeah <laughs> you mentioned earlier that this is uh 
new music for an upcoming EP. Um, yes. Where do you see yourself right now as far as the EP goes? Is that something that you're still working? Like, obviously, right now with quarantine and stuff, we can't be working with partners like we normally do. But yeah. were you almost done with this EP prior to this? Or is this something that you're still kind of working on? Going into it, I knew I was doing an EP. I wasn't exactly sure what the track list was going to be. Um, it kind of was was shifting and going back and forth between a couple songs. Um, and then actually, like, the week before the lockdown was implemented, I wrote a song that I was like, this has to be put out, this EP. I was like, there's no way this is not coming out in this batch of music. And so that was kind of the last edition. We pulled another song and, and placed that one. Um, instead and yeah now the track list is kind of set in stone and um there's definitely still some production final production work that's going on but for the most part um all the songs are in a in a very close to finished place if not finished um and yeah it's so cool i'm like thank god we like ended that on a good note and we like went into quarantine and now i have time to like write at home and then come out of it and bring in more songs and have like fresh perspective and everything are you worried that now that you have all this time that you might end up rewriting this all the music in the ep oh my god i freak out all the time i literally <laughs> I have songs i've done two years ago that i'm like this has no correlation to my life anymore but i love this song and i need to put it out that's what happens or like you move on from ideas every single day right. that you forget if something is good or not or you don't even realize it is um but I'm definitely doing a lot of writing now where I'm like, oh, well, maybe if we like just got this to a producer, this could replace this on this thing. And I'm like, no, you love these songs. Let them come out. And there's always going to be time to, to put the other ones you love out eventually. It doesn't seem like you have pressure on getting this finished and finalized and released. Is that safe to say? Yeah. I mean, uh, I think I put the pressure on everybody and myself mm -hmm. um, more so than anybody else does just because I want these songs to come out, you know? Um, but luckily they're all, like I said, very close to finish. So it shouldn't be too far off into the future that this next batch is in the world. <laughs>